Ladies and gentlemen, I have a special for you today. This is your GGG from LIB, and you know I always like to look for special diamonds of Liberian history. And I have a, I found a very, very, very unique person that has been off the grid for at least 30 years. Charlie Steiner, the zoo director of the Monrovia Zoo in Liberia leading up to the war. This man has a very, very interesting story, and nobody has ever told it. So this is your GGG from LIB. I don't just do comedy. I want to bring you the history of Liberia. And I have the Charlie Steiner Zoo Director and his beautiful wife, Annie. And I want to introduce you guys to them, and you want to hear their story. Let's go. So please introduce yourself, guys. My name is Annie Guru Steiner from the Monrovia Zoo. I'm Charles Steiner. From the Monrovia Zoo. And Charlie is 83 now. Charles is 83 wow. years old. And, uh, and we, want to, we want to take you guys down the memory road. Yeah. Before we look at the picture of the zoo, how did you guys meet? How we met? Yeah. <laughs> I was uh, in Grand Jire. He, he used to come around my area that way. He got some... Hippopotamus in Grand Jire. So hippopotamus so, may have to be loving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then uh, he came to the, my uh, village, and then um, we met, he met me, and he asked my father that I should marry to him. Mm. Yeah. Wow. What, what year was this? That was 1973. Uh, wow. Yeah. Wow. And then we got married. Yeah. Uh, June 15, 1972. So, and we have our beautiful daughter, Ophelia. Wow. And what brought this white man to Liberia? Why you come to Liberia, Shad? <laughs> I don't know. He came to Liberia. <laughs> he came Liberia. to Liberia through the University of Zurich mm -hmm. to help uh, make the... Um, the to work at the University of Science College mm -hmm. to produce working material for the science students for animal zoology for, for zoology wow yeah because His professor the... is a taxidermist oh yeah so he can he can he can preserve preserve the all dead these animals. animals yes wow yeah and for all of you listeners um, you know in Liberia. We never had a zoo. We never had a zoo. Let me make it clear. Every Liberian child, when they see an animal, they say that meat. This is meat. This is meat. That is, that is meat. This is meat. And Charles was one of the first person to bring environmental awareness and animal awareness to Liberia. And he taught us children that every meat has a name. This is called hippopotamus. This is called chimpanzee. And you don't need to kill it. It can be your friend. So he's one of the first trendsetters of modern day environmental awareness and animal preservation. Let's continue. So he came with the university, but I heard that once his contract finished, he, he had to make a choice. <laughs> when his contract finished, then he said, I would love to live here. And I, if, even if I don't have money, I will live here and help the people people and teach and show them the wildlife of Liberia. Mm. And he wrote several books. Wow. Yes. Wow. And then, I mean, to start a zoo, if I were in his place, I would buy the animals from the hunters that were bringing the thing to the market. Is that what you guys did too? Uh, How we, do you build a zoo? Uh, we do not uh, just buy the animal for, for, from the hunter. But there are a lot of orphan animals in Liberia. First, I was to start like an animal zoo, an animal orphanage. So okay. they, when the hunter killed the baby, they kill the mom, the mom yeah, and the they bring the baby, yeah. and then they don't know how to take care of it, and he did all. Wow. All of, yeah. them. All of them. So you mean to tell me you have monkey in your living room? We have <laughs> hippopotamus on our bed every <laughs> night. And that's what you yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even the the leper sure. used to sleep in the bedroom with us. What? Yes. What a story. That's what a, a story. Good story. Yeah, it's a good old time. Good old good time. Good old time. Yeah. Yes. I mean, every child would love to grow up with a father who allows a leopard in the bedroom. Yes. <laughs> 
Especially the hippo used to sit down on an, uh, the chair mm -hmm. and we all sitting in the living room watch that a vision together. Oh, wow. What a crazy story. Yeah. That's so fascinating. Yeah. So, so Charles Turner was also the um, vice president for the Wildlife Society in Liberia. Okay. He's also the founder of the Liberia uh, Conservation Society. Mm -hmm. And all these things, they come the end in 1990. We'll get to that part, but yeah. let's enjoy the good old days first. Yeah. So you started collecting animals in your living room, but yeah. the living room got too small soon. Then we we started we started making space for them in, in, in the yard. We had a very big yard, yeah. and in no time it became a zoo. It became four. Yeah. And then, I mean, how to feed all these animals? I know leopard can be eating whole cow. <laughs> The leopard can eat whole cow, he can eat whole goat. <laughs> well, um, he, he, he is really a good manager. Yeah. He's a good man, this man. Yeah. He managed all that we have enough money to feed all these animals wow. in the zoo. So he, he had sponsors, he was able to we got sponsors, interest people. We got sponsors, we have people uh, coming to the zoo. For example, Pervola, the Lanco manager, mm. he sponsored our leper wow. and he gave us money every month to eat. Wow. And I won't forget the man who bought the leper for us. His name is Ekeha Nota. Mm. He's a German forester in Liberia. Wow. And then he bought this leper and bring them to us. He saw them with a hunter and he he brought the he leper the animal, to us. Yeah. And then we start finding sponsor and uh, people to donate money to feed these animals. That's wow. how they do grow. And then you went to the airfield and you built the we real built Monrovia, the zoo. Monrovia Zoo. And now let's take a look at some of these pictures. So maybe we can, maybe you can bring the camera on this side. Just come on my side. So let's take a look at some of the private collection of the Monrovia Zoo. This is the Monrovia Zoo and Animal Orphanage. We need a zoo after the city mm -hmm. because every zoo in this world has to be. Che. That's hey, the leper. Leper. Look yes. at Mr. Steiner. Mr. Young Stanley, boy. Young boy. Look at all the animals that hanging on the man. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Papa used to be found. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, the, yeah, that's how we. These are all the hippopotamus the we have in the this zoo. The wildlife of Liberia that is almost extinct now. Yes. They killed all these animals during the war to eat. To eat. Just to survive. That's Ophelia. Oh, wow. That's his daughter. Yeah. And this is Josh standing himself. And he had to feed this animal by, by him. No government help. Milk. Mm -hmm. No, this is a private to project. Do private project. Oh, I used to collect these. The quail. From the quails. From the, the porcupine. The huh? porcupine. Mm. We call it porcupine in Liberia. We don't say porcupine. We say porcupine. <laughs> This beautiful, uh, uh, um, oh, that's a, that's a pig, right? pig, yeah, that's a wild Bush pig. pig. They are from in the wild in Lofa, yes, oh, in Sweden, yeah. All these dikers oh, we have to the this, dikers, the zebra diker, the everything. Look at these antelopes, yes. I don't know if you've seen these antelopes before, my people, yeah. You see these striped antelopes, the striped dukas, are you yeah. going to Look at that. Zebra it look, diker. It looks yeah. almost like zebra. Yeah, they call it zebra diker in Liberia. Wow. And a bush cow? Uh, the no, the, the that, black back diker. Black back diker. And yellow wow. back diker. This animal will they reproduce in the zoo. You see the baby? Yeah, yeah, baby yeah. So our place was so good and I hit. Mr. Steiner is a real professional with this animal because mm -hmm. it takes long time for animal to produce in zoo. To feel but safe. In, yeah. in Liberia, we made it. Wow. Oh, look at the birds. I That's heard it. yesterday at the show they say that Liberia has something like 730 different types of birds. We have more than 700 uh, different species of birds wow. in Liberia. And uh, Wolf Kata. 
One hour. Yeah. Hmm. Wolf got her, wrote a book together with my husband. Mm -hmm. They call it Boys of Liberia. Wow. So your husband is a real animal professor. Yeah. yeah. Ostrich. Ostrich. Parrot. Look at all these type of birds. I've never seen them before in Liberia. Yes. Very popular. Mm -hmm. So so parrot on here. Then we get a gator, the alligator. Oh, we have a lot in the Montserrat River. Yeah. Look at beautiful Liberia. And this is the part one of our zoo book. Okay, let's go to part two. We're hungry for it. So yeah. this is part two, and let's go. Oh, the monkey is sucking milk. Jelly baby. <laughs> I remember I used to play with a the monkey then. Yes. I used to chunk peanut to them so they would yeah. dance for me. They yeah. used to dance like crazy. Yeah, look at old Antan I believe. Yeah, yeah. There you yeah, go. Yeah, the young oh. man, yeah. <laughs> You see, this is these are the magical moments where he gave the animals to us to children. children to I play. remember I was eight when I heard my mo first monkey in my hand. Yes. And he was the man who taught me about animal love. Amen. See the beautiful, you see how children were happy to play with these animals? It's amazing, man. So you see, my people, this is a rare human being that just knows animals. These are the animals. blind school to the zoo. Blind people came, huh? Because wow. they cannot see, they can, so they, they have, have to touch, touch yeah. every hippopotamus body. Wow, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. The blind and people okay? came. <laughs> yeah, the blind school. Hmm. They used to have a blind school. And okay, all okay. the students from different, different schools. I remember how we did class trips. We yeah. did class trips to the zoo. Yeah. And I have a funny story too. Mm. That hippopotamus, Charles Steiner came to my seventh grade math class. He walked in with this hippopotamus. Yes. And he said, this is a hippopotamus. I say he saved the math lesson. We never did math that day again. <laughs> Everybody just wanted to play with a hippopotamus. Yes. Look at that. The beautiful That's wall, the Palava Palava Huts. Huts. We have in this zoo. That's wonderful. Yes. And you see, this is this is like the final stage. This I remember. This was full of full birds, of birds. leopards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a really big, nice cage. Of, the zoo was full, and you could get some coke. You could drink small things, go visit, you enjoy your family trip. Yeah. And they even had you see advertisement on the car. This is the zoo. zoo. Look at Oran Day Liberia, man. It used to be so sweet. And then we had a vet. They had a clinic for the animals. Yes. Look at that. And these are the tickets. Y'all see? Maybe some of y'all remember. 25 cents. Look at Athena <laughs> Edu. Look at 50 cents to come. How well, that thing will, how that will feed the animal. So we enjoyed the good old days. I think this went up to 1990. Yes. I remember growing up in Liberia. You know, the 1990, we started hearing rumors about a man named Charles Taylor. We never took it serious. We thought this thing would just blow over, just like the 1985 coup. Kwe Wampa coup. One or two weeks of struggle, then everything's back to normal. But we never knew that this was going to be the end of the animals, the end of the zoo, and the end of our lives in Liberia. Because we all became like birds. We had to fly away. So let's see how their story with the war went. So 1990 came, and Charles Taylor came to hit the city. I, I left Liberia on the last plane in May and okay. for the white people and for the normal white people yeah. with children. I know some people left later, um, but how was your story with the war in 1990? Uh, 1990, then the war was close mm -hmm. to the city. And you had and all these all animals. All these animals. Then we cannot go to the market again to even buy food for yeah. them. And then things started being bad on us to feed the animal. You cannot find milk anymore to feed the chimpanzee babies. So uh, one evening, come a group of army people in a car. We don't know where they are from, Chatero side or those side. I had left with the children. He was still in the house. He said the war will be finished by so, 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 so hour that's, and ever. That's what we all thought. Yeah. So he was sitting in the house 
and one evening, a group of army people entered the yard, mm. and uh, and uh, I say, what are you doing here? He said, I have my animal here. I, I cannot care. leave. Yeah. And the group of army, they were a machine gun. They killed all the animals no. in front of him. Hey, yes, they just massacred him. Yeah, with a machine gun, they did the trees Jeez. and the animal, the cages, everything go down in no time. And they told him, "Say we are going. When we come back, we meet you here. Okay. We will have you killed." Sure. Mm -hmm. Then he said. Okay, then what I have to do with him? Nothing more. They finish kill all the animals. Then he started finding a way outside mm -hmm. from the from the zoo to go on the main street to find refuge. Mm -hmm. That how he ended up to the German embassy, mm -hmm. and then uh, they pack up the the eyes all of them to go to Dukolo, mm -hmm. and from there they fight they fight to let them from mm -hmm. from Liberia to Syria. So the helicopter take him? Yeah, this is American helicopter. I remember the helicopter then taking him. Yeah. yeah. That's how it happened. Wow, and then you came back to your motherland, yeah. your white man country, yeah. to Zurich. So he he's a Swiss man? Yeah, he's Swiss. Okay. He funks. So he had, thank God, he had Switzerland as a backup plan. Yes. And for me too, it was Germany that saved my life. Okay. You know? And um, so after that, um, you know, I was just thinking, have you ever, you told me that you wanted someone to write a book about him. Yes. Maybe you can, maybe you can talk into the camera I, and tell your wish. What are you looking for? I, I am looking for somebody to write a book for him, his life in Liberia. Um, that will be something add to the zoo. It will be a nice thing for us. Yeah. So anybody who interested. Yeah. You can ask Gigi. Contact Gigi. Con contact Gigi, and then we can start from there. And you have material. You have thousands I have of pictures. All the materials for the book. She has newspaper clips. Yes. She has video clips, DVD clips of the zoo. I think you can make a beautiful documentary book or yeah. a movie out of it. Yes. While the man is still alive. Yeah. And you see, my people, this is this is my intention to promote Liberian culture, to promote Liberian history. And this is a man who impacted many Liberians, bringing love for animals, not just to slaughter them. And he has a very interesting story of living your dream. He came to Liberia, he married a Liberian woman, he, he, he supported the Liberian animals, and he was the first person to just bring awareness for animal love that is normal in other countries, but in Liberia, we just survive by killing animals. And he was the first to really bring environmental awareness for the animals and, and animal protection. So I think it's, it's just fair that we honor him with this video. And um, if you are interested in supporting the family by helping as a writer or a documentary filmer, just contact me, GGG, on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube on my channels, and let's see if we can make it happen. Do you have any last words to the people of Liberia watching? You have something to say to the Labua people on this particular uh, July 29, we say um, we lo he loves Labua. He still speaks Polokwa. Yeah, he can, I mean, still, he can speak still speak rap Polokwa. Polo Polo <laughs> and uh, and time, he still speaks Liberian English? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that's the best one. Yeah, Thank you. So we say thank you to everybody that watched this video, and then uh, we will be happy yeah. to hear from you. And, uh, and we want to say one, thank you. One day we'll be there in that area. We want to say thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. I wanted to add that George we are invited to Pape 2020. And he called for him, and he gave him a Lifetime Achievement Award. He yeah. honored him for his lifetime work. So the president recognized this man too. Yeah. And I think it's high time that Liberia recognizes this man's achievement too. Yes. So I wanna say personally for my side, I wanna say thank you, we wanna honor you. Yes. Thank you for everything you did for Liberia. Yeah. Thank you for impacting my life. Yes. I remember holding that monkey up to this day. I still have a picture of that, me holding that monkey. Okay. And it's one of my fondest memories. So I wanna say thank you. Thank you. So 30 years later now, 
it's a new day and let's mm. make the best of it. May God bless you for everything you have done for the country. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for this interview. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So Charles, uh, what made you to stay in Liberia? You know, I did. You know, you could have had a nice life in Switzerland. You could have come back. You know, what made you to stay in Liberia? It's a poor country. <laughs> He's laughing. Oh, yeah, I'm so happy to come here. Yeah. Hey, I love Liberia. Liberia. You love Liberia so much. Yeah. And you, you told I, me, you told me that you wanted to follow your heart. Yeah. Mm. You are a Liberian man. Yeah. yeah. And you fell in love with a Liberian woman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. It was a very nice time. Yeah. And thank you for everything you did for Liberia. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being so nice to me. Mm -hmm. No, we honor you. We want to honor you. Yeah, thank you, Papi. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes.